I have a confession. At Silverdale, we partner with ministries and people in Chattanooga and throughout the world who are doing some really, really cool things to bring the gospel into people's lives. But I don't really know a lot of their stories. In Stories of Impact, we're going to be exploring some of the stories of what God is doing in and through our partners. In this first video, we're going to travel with Richard and Krista Hetzel into the Peruvian Amazon. I hope you enjoy. Did you ever see yourself as a missionary? I never, ever thought I'd be on the mission field. I came from a background where, you know, as a kid, you know, just lots of abuse. I kind of grew up and even into my married life thinking, you know, I just, I'm not worth anything. And so why in the world would God ever choose me to go to missions? I mean, that was the furthest thing from my mind. And so, no, I never, I never once thought that, but it's so interesting how, you know how God uses you and uses certain things in your life just as preparation for the next thing that you don't know is coming? <laughs> Uh, that's that's where God that that's that's what God did to me. God really just used every single step in that process to get us to the field. And so, yeah, I never thought it would happen. Never crossed my mind. But now I can't imagine doing anything else. He started leading mission trips with the academy, and so pretty early on in doing that, he um, he felt the call to missions. Um, and every time he'd come home, he would he'd be like, "Are you ready?" And I'm like, mm, "Nope, not ready." <laughs> every single summer, I would come on a trip, go back home with my wife. Hey, God's calling us to mission field, and She'd say, okay, that's great, but I'm not ready. <laughs> he hasn't called me yet. And I said, okay. During my quiet time, the Lord just kind of started thinking, what if, what if? From that point, um, the Lord just started moving all of our hearts. So yeah, I mean, we were in Lima for uh, three years, and then we've been in the jungle now for seven. We're, we're in a city, but we're still in the jungle. So it's not a tribal community, but it is jungle. I mean, we went from Chattanooga, we were very comfortable and growing, but very comfortable to Costa Rica, which is kind of just another deeper of a step then to Lima, deeper, then to the jungle. I mean, it's just seeing each step lead to something else. I mean, it's amazing that we've even been here uh, for seven years. I mean, I would have never have imagined being here uh, for, for this long, at, or at all for that matter. Part of what I do is um, um, teach us our, at our missionary kids' school here in Pucallpa. And 
I did not see that coming either. I've been teaching English and then also Bible to middle school. And um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it and it's just been a blessing. done some girls retreats, um, just shepherding and just being a safe place for kids. That's another one of my passions is discipling girls. When we first told them that we were thinking about going overseas, it was so funny, you know, seeing the difference in our kids. You know, Natalie, it was a complete roller coaster. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss my friends, but oh my goodness, what an adventure this is gonna be. Whereas Nathan was like, all right, <laughs> if you guys are there, I'm fine, whatever. When I was eight, my family moved to Costa Rica to learn language for a year, learn Spanish, which I was just along for the ride. I was just having fun. After that, we moved to Lima, Peru. But then after about three and a half years there, we moved here to Pucallpa in the jungle, the Amazon jungle of Peru. And I got plugged into a missionary kid's school and I made a bunch of new friends. I started uh, talking more Spanish. I started to get to know more people and I instantly felt like I was home. I'd like to describe it as the, the perfect place because I love the country, the weather, the people, the language, I love it all. But more than anything, I love how God has used it to build me up and how God has used it to plug me in so that I feel more at home when I am here. Most of our fun comes from outside just because that's pretty much what there is to do here. We have motorbikes, we get to go to the lake, we can go swimming, we can do all these things. Um, when we're outside and we're, there's people around us, we don't usually like to stand out more than we already do. So we'll talk in Spanish and we'll, we'll switch languages. We'll usually forget a word in one language and switch to the other so that, but everybody knows what each other is saying because we all speak both languages. And it, at this point, it's more natural to, to have one foot in both cultures because that's the way that we grew up. I have had so many pairs of shoes. The amount of shoes I've left at restaurants, malls, the like just, I leave them everywhere because they don't stay on my feet for very long. Um, even at the malls here, you're not required to wear shoes because it's just, no, just, just shoes are a no. <laughs> I'm very excited to go to college. I, I'm also a little bit scared though because it's, so far away from anything I've ever been in. Like, it's not my culture, really. A lot of people will look at me and think I'm American. While it's true in one sense, I'm really not fully American. I'm, I'm very much Peruvian in my culture and the food that I like. Ultimately, now, because I've been here, I've been able to hear how uh, he's been calling me to go into the ministry and to hopefully one day be a pastor and walk align, alongside other people and grow with them in a new community. It's kind of terrifying, but also really encouraging that God has brought me this far and I know he's gonna keep, keep taking me until the end. Richard's primary um, work is going out and training pastors and national leaders. 
And so that requires him two to three days traveling out to a tribal community and um, spending five days to a week um, ministering to those groups. Originally when I came down to Peru, I worked with a group called FINOP, and the, the purpose of coming was to, to do conferences and train pastors in all the different people groups that we work with here in the Amazon. So my role was to go community to community, people group to people group, to train native pastors, and I would go for about a week at a time. So we're in a tribal community called Nuevo Paraiso, which in Spanish just means New Paradise. This tribal community is a community of the Shipibo people group. I honestly didn't have it in my mind to work specifically with the Shipibo people group. I had seen too many Shipibos over the years that had heard about Christ and kind of fell into this model of, you know, cultural Christianity that we often see so many times. Then, and so I didn't really have a desire to work with them. I wanted to go to the people who just really wanted to know about Christ. But then I came across some that had a huge desire to learn, just didn't know very much, and they just really, really wanted some help. And so they asked me to come alongside them and help them create curriculum for a Shipibo Bible Institute. Well, that institute is in this community. God just really put a burden on me uh, while I started working with this institute to let that not be a little project that was just gonna be in every once in a while like these other communities. And so I'd really just felt that God told me to make a commitment for three years to just work with the Institute. We teach orally. We teach the Bible through storytelling. Well, we teach the Bible through storytelling chronologically as well. When you teach chronologically and when you teach through storytelling, there's just a, an awareness that comes about about how it's, a, how it's one overall story, one overall love letter from Christ to us and everything is focused on Christ. And so, over the next three years, my commitment is to help them develop a storytelling curriculum from creation to Christ. Uh, and that way, all of the pastors that travel from village to village to come here to learn in the Institute, they are then gonna be able to go back to their own communities and really teach people the Bible.
One of the things I appreciate so much about our Silverdale family is that I know that they are holding the rope for me and my family as we serve here in the Amazon jungle. Yeah, I mean, Silverdale, there's no way we could do this without you. Uh, we're just so grateful to be here, but we're also just so grateful that God is using you to send us so that we can be here to ministry.